I'm in. Yeah, you know. sorry. No, no, uh, to, uh, we see you in Yeah. Um, in in the times in between, um, um, uh, I know m you might ask yourself, why don't they do interviews? But uh, we don't have the infrastructure, and uh, most of the players, uh, when they come out of the the pool, they don't want to talk. It's just like uh, they want to stay with their uh, team and uh, uh, debrief. And um, um, in between the games, we only have two minutes and we want to stay in the games because uh, people are interested in the games and uh, less in our interviews. That's what they tell us. Um, one interesting thing, I just uh, uh, write, uh, write articles for the BADST uh, paper Sporthoche which is uh, the official uh, magazine of uh, the, the Federation, National. the German uh, National Federation of uh, Underwater Sports and Underwater Rugby. And uh, the last uh, article I wrote was about um, referees, how to become a referee in underwater rugby, what does it mean to be a referee, and why should you be a referee, and what, what's, what's it all about. And um, as I told you before about coaches, um, I think referees are also an important part and we in our club has um, we have almost six referees and that gives the whole team um, a different an level of play in insight in rules, yeah, yes. to play by the rules and if you play by the rules and it doesn't mean uh, you play ta 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 and don't know the game um, it means you you know what is what is what can be done in underwater rugby and you play by the rules and I think rules are very important so if you want to be underwater rugby uh, referee, contact um, the national referee uh, of your country or even uh, of another country and maybe we can arrange something. Yeah. It's uh, probably more difficult to get to be a referee. Uh, if this is a country that is a starting, a exactly. season half, then they, you can contact us. Uh, here in Germany we have a lot of referees, we speak different languages and we maybe can organize, you know, talks or... Um, workshops or exchange uh, yes. knowledge. And we, we could even think about uh, um, like Australia if they don't have uh, the, the means to uh, have referees, how you could do it uh, uh, over the internet, yeah. how you really, we could talk about that. And I think it's uh, like a coach, it's very important to have referees that improves the game um, if you know what can be done, can't be done, should be done. And uh, it gives you a big insight how to structure a uh, competition. So, Orcas in blue, uh, Colombia in blue against uh, Wales in white, uh, Australia. And uh, I think uh, it's, uh, well, prediction is the Orcas might will, win. might, might at least win. Uh, one referee is going up again, probably his uh, oxygen bottle is empty already. Uh, still have to wait a little second. <laughs> Angela, la pronunciación en inglés, si es la segunda o es media o pero ahora bueno, Colombia contra Australia. Okay, here we go. Very fast uh, speed swimming on the close side in the corner of Colum uh, from uh, the Orcas and uh, Australia does a good job. They intercepted a pass and are now in ball possession but are on the heavily attack in the middle of the pool, still in the area, and uh, Orcas coming back again with the ball to the basket from the close side. Um, Australian does quite well keeping up with the speed, uh, at least in, in case of keeping uh, the Orcas busy, but here we are at the basket. Well done, snatched away a ball from the Orcas, recovered from the Orcas um, two, three meters in front of the basket of uh, Wow, and this is a counter-attack from two Australian players against two Orca players at the Orca basket, and they're going in uh, heavily the obstructed. Took it too they thought that maybe it was going to yep. be easy because it, that was almost a counter-attack in an empty basket. Yes, they, they didn't expect them to swim through that fast with the ball. So Chicos, it's Colombia. Que casi cobran un gol a la portería vacía, creo que. Eh, Orcas no pensaba que Australia podía darles un poquito así de, de batalla, pero los chicos australianos, eh, si bien son nuevos, hace solo cuatro años que juegan juntos, eh, han, están haciendo ah. un buen partido, están peleando y tienen un juego también bastante ágil. Here we go. Ahí está uno de los chicos de right la the basket of Australia with, the, with the one of the women uh, on the basket. 
Well done. They did the change. Uh, they changed, cambiaron sin que entrara la balón. Ah, here's the goal. Hasta que entró. Nevertheless. <laughs> Muy bien. Nevertheless, uh, a good two first two minutes uh, in this game from Australia. I'm quite impressed what uh, they sí. put in the water here. I if you imagine, they told us they play together. I think Australia is so happy about that yes. they won against I think against they are Austria. endorphins. They're they just are running just on yeah. on the happy hormones. And I guess that that, that counter-attack was a little wake-up call for, for Colombia. Yeah. And so now they're a little bit, they, they know they need to, you know, stay more in the game. And it, it's not difficult, but it's not that easy either. So, uh, and we are again uh, at the basket of the Orcas. And, and uh, don't forget that Ricardo is Colombian. So the <laughs> way Ricardo teaches the Australian as a Colombian are to, to, to play. And yes. Ricardo had a lot of yes. insight from Duisburg, from Norway. Yes. So this is not traditional Australian team that train on their own. This is... Uh, with a trainer that has input from many countries. Yes, yes, definitely. And uh, they are strong players. They are quite massive players. And even though we are right now at the basket of the Australians, you see the Orcas being a little bit more careful. Yeah. Oh, there was another goal. That second goal. Yeah. Uh, la verdad que no tenemos que olvidar que Ricardo, que es el coach de los chicos de Australia, es un chico colombiano que empezó a entrenar en Colombia, luego estuvo en España, luego entrenó con Alemania, Duisburg, luego entrenó con Noruega y ahora está en Australia. Entonces tiene un poco de todos los diferentes tipos uh, de, de rugby y entonces eso es un equipo, si bien es un equipo nuevo, eh, tiene un, un coach muy, con mucha experiencia que pudo transmitir al equipo las diferentes tácticas y las diferentes formas de juego de los diferentes países y eso la verdad que es, es muy importante. Um, but you can see the guys from Orca quite relaxed, I was going to say, maybe I was the wrong one, but they are just doing their game and you see that this not really... Um, it's not, it's not it's the not challenge. Hard. It's no. not hard. No, challenge, I don't know, maybe, but it's not hard. They're but not it's suffering. a fast game. But it's, it's a fast game. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I was talking to them uh, for a while to the uh, boys that, you know, play in the uh, sub-21. And they said, I mean, they don't mind swimming. But what they really mind was this, this strength, very physical game from Germany, from Norway. He's fighting on the ball. Because yes. yeah. if you pay attention to the Colombian way, they swim around the basket. I don't know how many kilometers they swim going from right to left, from right to left, because it's amazing. But they don't mind that. They're, they're used to that. They, they, they're, they're like running a marathon the water in a way, <laughs> with that much swimming that they do. Uh, so if you are not used to that as a defender, it's so annoying. It's, this is the way like the girls won against um, Germany. Uh, there was so much, so much swimming going from right to left. But I came back to the game. Um, Orgas is uh, swimming a counter attack, and Australia is trying to stop it. Defender is on position. The goalkeeper is on position, and but we have one right, one left of the Orca trying to break into the goalkeeper. But the goalie gets the ball and starts his counter attack and loses the ball. Let's see. It's outside, I think it's outside, outside the, yeah. the game area. Um, well, four and a half minutes left and three zero for Orcas. It's it's no surprise, but uh, the surprise is more on the on the fight the Australians give the, the Orcas and keep them uh, busy. Let's say they keep them busy, and it's uh, not the the easiest swimming through they uh, they could have uh, expected. And another goal for zero. Four minutes left in the first half. Um, okay, you see, uh, they can uh, Australia probably cannot keep up uh, the the way they played in the beginning, um, but nevertheless, um, it's not so easy, and uh, the Orcas have to be careful not to catch a goal by a counter attack. But very well done. Yes. Nice I mean, game by the Orcas. Here's o sea, a fast siempre, counter attack pero, uh, on the open side, um, close side, pass to the open side, buena, back and forth. Defensa, uh, just de las que y de, de los del always constantly 
passing the ball so the defense and the goalie don't know where the attack comes from. Yes, but the ball and just, you know, got the and ball these off movements and the defender just got the ball and wants to start a counter-attack and no one is, is, is starting the counter-attack, he's just fighting. This is so important that in the moment that you get the ball, someone, you know, get the ball and, and, and swim away with it because otherwise you get stuck and the moment you get stuck and you get tired, you get a goal. So, they manage it very good and a, and a counter. I mean, two Australian against three Orcas, and uh, they're attacking on the open side. And wow. the new players, oh, it's just did a pass. There were three players on the wrong angle. They should be more into the middle because the one having the ball didn't see them and couldn't pass it and pass the ball with the defender of Orcas that swim a counter attack. Uh, position into the goal of Australia and the, the score a goal. Orca player was already lying on yeah. the uh, Australian basket just waiting for uh, the fast counter attack to break through and give him the ball. But nevertheless, the attack from Australia was uh, very impressive. And even though it was one guy against uh, three Orcas, he uh, fought hard and didn't break through. But nevertheless, they couldn't get the ball from him. Um, uh, I think we are Five very zero. surprised from Australia. Yep. I mean, also don't forget that Ricardo, the trainer, also participated in many, many Champions Cup with uh, Piranhas Peñafiel as he was in Madrid. So he has a lot of experience and it's great. Also, he has apparently two Norwegian players that live in Australia that also have experience in rugby. So that helped very much to give more structure to the team. So this is what we've seen, yeah. I mean, that's why. They don't, they don't seem really overwhelmed. They don't seem um, to be overrun by the um, Colombians. Went through and pushed the ball into the goal of the Australians, which are now on the right side, and the Orcas from Colombia on the left side. Um, you're watching the um, Champions Cup 2016. My name is Wolf. I'm a player from the Sporthof Berlin, which is the local team uh, here in Berlin. And um, with me is Lorena. Um, she's also playing for the Sporthof. And we're doing the comments for you. It's a little bit cold here. Lorena is uh, jumping up and down uh, to warm herself up. Um, okay, back to the game. Uh, hope we can get the picture back again. 7-0 for the uh, Orcas from Colombia who play in blue and we are at the basket of uh, Colombia that was quite a, a heavy pressure and we have a three throw against Colombia for uh, um, Australia they doing very good and uh, in the second half, in the, in, the, in the middle of the second half, uh, starting on attack with uh, the speed they're displaying, you see the, the Orcas, um, it's not so easy for them to get in ball control and to in their game. The Australians succeed quite well in disturbing and interrupting um, the swim and uh, pass pattern of the um, of the Orca players who are quite annoyed I think uh, because they are they, they like to swim and have the open uh, to, to play their game but uh, it's it's difficult with the uh, with the Australians always interrupting always intercepting always going down and uh, doing a good job keeping them away um, even if the in the end if you can see with a 7-0 or 8-0 now um, the Orca succeed. It's not the, the easiest way um, for them to go through a game and score. Really well done. Five minutes left. So the last half of the second half um, started. And I'm impressed by the um, good underwater rugby from uh, Australia. And uh, quite sure we will see a happy Ricardo from Australia who's living with us uh, at our home. I think he will be quite happy today 
tired but very happy after this game because he can be proud of what uh, what his team did in the water and uh, impressive a very nice game from the um, Colombians too as expected so the surprise here are definitely the Australians timeout I guess uh, for um, Australia Time out is counting down. The uh, referees are back in the water. You can see a lot of uh, stuff swimming around in the water. That's uh, normal with all the fins and everything. This is not really dirt, but uh, rubber and uh, particles. But uh, uh, the the team uh, from the pool will filter the water, so hopefully we'll have uh, crystal clear water tomorrow again. Back in the game, we are um, in the middle of the pool on the close side in the corner. And uh, New Zealand uh, is in ball possession, going in on the basket uh, directly in the, in the uh, same height as the goalkeeper. Um, but couldn't get through, was tackled away by the Colombians. Um, but still it looks like yeah, New Zealand is still in ball possession even after this cluster on the surface. Now one of the Zealand players tries to swim free of the Colombian attack and goes uh, um, through the whole pool to the corner side, to the close side. And um, the, the Orcas start little um, B attacks on, on the New Zealand players and try to, to steal away the walls from them, but they don't really succeed. Um, the New Zealand players are heavily together. Ah, oh, this was holding without ball from both of them, but no call from the referee. Probably he uh, didn't see it. Did I say New Zealand? Oh, Australia. Ah, oh, I switched on the map. So it's uh, uh, again the Orcas uh, in attack mode um, in the middle of the pool and the bottom of the pool going in. There is one player on the open side and he succeeded. It's just no defender. In the classical attack structure you has, uh, have two players on both sides. You go in from the middle and uh, to pass the ball to the one who's uh, in the better position to score. Um, and it went quite well. I'm always um, surprised if I see a referee with um, fiberglass fins because, uh, well, it, it hurts a little bit to wear them too long. So wearing them as a referee is interesting. So call from the referee. Um, out of the water. Uh, the outcasts are already protecting their uh, basket. Yeah, it's a free throw for uh, Australia. And uh, well snatched away by the Colombians who go in with high speed. Three, four Colombians now at the basket of New Zealand. Um, a nice change from the goalies. So uh, no score from the Colombians. Now the second wave goes in. Just one player. Second player comes after him, but the Australian uh, player intercepted uh, the not very well aimed pass down. And we're in the middle of the pool where uh, the Australian player was intercepted by himself. So still the ball is in possession for uh, the for Orca. And uh, they are attacking, but it's not so easy for them to score. They had uh, several waves going in on the defense. And now even uh, Australia caught the ball uh, from them. It's a 9-0 for uh, Colombia, but uh, Australia still gives them a fight. We are now um, on the open side of the pool, about 3-4 uh, meters away from the Colombian basket. And uh, the Australian ball keeper is tackled by the uh, Colombians. But he succeeds in pushing uh, away the ball and his, uh, his teammates. 
catch the ball and now we have a fast counter attack from the Orcas who catch the ball they come in three of them but are stopped on the way very well done by Australia before they could reach um, the the basket and uh, these these interception games from Australia are uh, very well done to interrupt the, the the flow of the attack of the Colombians and you see them struggle um, they are in good ball control but here again uh, one Australian succeeds in catching away the ball uh, keep it in possession and succeed and then now we have a ah, there was a good chance for Orca but uh, he didn't see the Australian uh, waiting for the ball that was a impressive game for Australia and for their uh, first participation particip partici well the first time they are um, in the Champions Cup and they can be proud of what they do um, uh, I'm sure the Orcas will talk to them later and to the Australians too I'm sure the Orcas will say whoa um, that's what that wasn't that easy um, as we've expected so well done Australia even if it's uh, 9-0 um, but um, you did quite well congratulations so yes um, what else can we talk about um, development of the water rugby I think it um, these two points referees and coaches which are important the other thing is youth and uh, I think uh, before complaining um, of the decline of underwater rugby, um, you should put your energy um, into developing uh, underwater rugby and put uh, energy in uh, putting together a youth team, uh, going to schools, um, getting pool time. We did that with our um, uh, with our club four years ago, and uh, did uh, two times the German uh, youth championships with our spot our team first uh, U15 we made second place and uh, last year U18 with them and it takes a lot of energy it takes a lot of uh, uh, dedication to stay with uh, the kids and uh, to to be with them but um, I know it's uh, easier to complain about uh, things not working out, things are not good in